I'm Diane Derby outside of Club Q in Colorado Springs. For many in our community, this was a second home, a place of refuge where they felt loved, accepted, and safe until one year ago tonight when a gunman walked in and opened fire. Five people died, dozens were hurt, and that sense of safety was shattered. The families of the five people killed are left trying to find a way to cope with unspeakable grief. I sat down with some of them to talk about how they found a way forward and what they hope you'll remember most about their loved ones. You just can't forget them. Do you worry that will happen? I do. That's why the families of the five people killed at Club Q continue to tell their stories, to honor their lives, to share the memories of their loved ones, especially the happy ones. Adriana Vance says her son Raymond loved to dance. Yeah, he was funny. He was a dancer. He used to keep me up on all the latest moves. His grandmother, Estella, would join right in. He danced with me in Cancun. We went to Cancun and we were dancing. Raymond loved his family, his dog, his girlfriend, and God. Raymond got saved. Um, he finally accepted my request to go to church after nagging and nagging him to come with me to just check it out. Just a few weeks later, he was killed. I was afraid to take my younger son with me to church because I thought, man, if he gets saved, maybe he might take him too. So I stopped going. But then I started having talks with my husband and he was just telling me that despite what happened, you still have to keep the faith and you just have to continue to go because that's what's going to help you get through this. Van saw her son just before he headed out that night with his girlfriend, Cassie Fierro, and her family. Their last conversation, a happy one. He came in my room after he got dressed because he had just got him, you know, an outfit and some new cologne. And he had his hair done. And he came in the room and he said, um, how do I look, Ma? How do I look? And I said, you look good. I said, you look good. I said, you smell even better. This cell phone video taken right before Raymond was killed. His mom texted him one more time. It was getting ready to be midnight. So I was trying to find out what he was going to do, if he was coming home or uh, what his plans were. And he was going to stay at Cassie's house and said that he would be home in the morning uh, to get his dog and to get ready to go to work. So I just told him, OK, I love you. And he said, I love you, too. Seven minutes later, he was gone. The man they called the gentle giant taken from them in an instant. Fuck you to him was his home. The Julia Kissling says her brother and best friend, Derek Rump, loved his family of friends at Club Q. As a longtime bartender there, he often became a support system for his customers and coworkers. Praying for people was one of his things to do. Mm -hmm. Especially when people were down or about, he would love to go to their house and bless their house and say prayers. Um, oh, he loved it. He found so much joy in that. This ends the, and concludes the tour of beautiful Colorado Springs by yours truly, Derek Rupp. She says Derek made roots in Colorado and loved exploring the mountains. About a year before wow. this happened, and uh, he was just in his glory world. My mom finally got on a plane for the very first time in her life, and she was so terrified to go, and he was so happy that she did it um, and he was so excited to just take her on a tour of Colorado. It's so pretty. And yeah, they shared so many beautiful moments together. It was, it was extremely beautiful. Treasured memories their family holds on to in their pain of losing Derek. Yeah, I would never have thought in a million years that this would be us and that it would have been my brother. Jeff and Sabrina Aston's son Daniel was the first person in the club killed. It was the second time their family has been impacted by a deadly shooting. In 2013, their grandson was in Arapahoe High School in Centennial when a killer came in shooting too. Thankfully, he survived. The guy came in and shot the girl, and uh, luckily he didn't get out. Everybody else managed to get out, but except my grandson. He was actually in the library with her. And he, but he was hiding behind uh, the, the bookcases. 
and uh, he called Daniel of, of all people. This world will never tame me. This world will never make me hard. Daniel loved writing poems, his partner Wyatt Kent, and his family at Club Q where he was a bartender. It's a place where his parents were treated like family too. They called us Mama and Papa Aston, and they treated us like king and queen. They waited on us, you know, we couldn't even have to stand up, they'd go get drinks for us, you know, whatever, you know. And, uh, cause they, and a lot of them said, you know, parents don't come to these things, you know. And, uh, and a lot of them, you know, their, their uh, families have disowned them. From an early age, the Astons knew their son, born as a girl, wanted to be a man. He always liked his hair short. You know, I sometimes make him grow it out, but he always liked his hair short. You know, he's got one in his kindergarten picture where he's got his arms stretched out. And uh, so, yeah, he, like I said, he told us he was a boy, and then he kind of, like I said, when he got a little older, he kind of hid it, you know, from other people, you know, including us, you know. So I thought, well, maybe he is going through just a phase. But they welcomed whatever choice Daniel made. He was so happy. How can you not, you not watch your child to be happy? Tiffany Loving knew early on, too, her sister Kelly Loving wanted to be a girl. She was younger. I just thought she was, like, real, you know, prissy, you know? She said Kelly had gone to Club Q for the first time the night she was killed. She wasn't there five minutes before her life came to an end. Her birthday is on the 16th and she didn't really get to celebrate. And I believe she wanted to go out, but you know, being transgender, um, you don't just go to regular clubs sometimes because you're not accepted. And you know, she was not from there. So I think she was just going to see where it was okay to, you know, go and enjoy herself. She says Kelly loved the trans community and loved dressing up in glamorous ways. She didn't judge people. She didn't want to be judged. She just wanted to be beautiful and live as a woman. Now she's left grieving a loss too painful to bear. I kind of feel like I lost a child that I didn't birth because I always took her under my wing, always protected her. Stephanie Clark, the protector, too, of her younger sister, Ashley Paw. She was out for a girls' night with a friend when she was killed. Her friend was shot, too, and survived. They were both married with kids and felt that that was a safe place to go over a regular bar with men hitting on them, you know. They thought that that would be, I guess, a safer place. Ashley loved her husband, Kurt their young daughter, Riley, and the families and children she worked with at Kids Crossing. I was asked what we could do um, to remember her at this time, and that's what she would want, is for us to gather and help with the foster kids and make sure that they have gifts for Christmas. She just wanted to help people. Clark believes her sister would even be willing to help the shooter who took her life. She was always there to help anybody who needed it. And the sad thing is she would have helped him. She helped a lot with mental issues or anything like that that she could. And she would have been one that would have helped him. Help to stop the hate that has changed their lives forever. So I'm hoping that people learn that if someone out there, if it's, whether it's my son, my nephew, whoever, having some problems, um, having problems being with other people or being hateful or have some kind of mental problems, that the family are there for them. and get them help, get them help before they do something to hurt people. You know, we can need to get rid of this hate. We need to, you know, tone it down, you know, uh, our divisions with each other, uh, try to learn to, you know, get along. Stop being so hateful, accept people for who they are. They're not bothering anyone. Be kind, <clears throat> be humble. She would want just people to love each other.
Yeah. It's so simple, right? Mm -hmm. But so we make it hard. 